worship it. They didn't own the church they were in, but they owned it in the sense that they were part of it. They had pride in their work. I can't say it's much different with these fellows from Guatemala and El Salvador because I'm a pragmatist. I look at the real world. Go to the factories and tell me who's on the production line. And, oh, I know, you'll run the production lines yourself. All of you elitists on the right are going to run the production lines. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All of you, all of you pure conservatives, you're going to build the houses and you're going to run the production lines. Oh, no, I've heard it all before. Why are they taking the jobs that Americans would do? Yeah, well, what Americans? What jobs that Americans will do? You know any Americans who are going to build the houses again? Maybe there was a time 15 years ago that we could have stopped this and rebuilt the building trades in America by putting up vocational schools and teaching American uh, drug addicts to build houses instead of staying home and smoke dope. Tens of millions of white boys who do nothing but smoke dope and sit in their mother's house. Useless idiots. Worthless to America. I see them walking down the street with their, I'm talking about white kids, with their pants hanging down under their behinds, aping jailbirds. And I say to myself, I look at them as they go by, and I say, that's the future of America right there. Look at that idiot with the skinny behind walking by. And don't, don't think I don't mock him with my eyes. And they can feel it too. There's no father around to tell him you're a moron. Go get a belt. Go get a pair of pants that fit. You look like a sissy in a prison cell, you idiot, you. What are you marching around with pants falling off your behind? The cheap teachers can't say it because they'll get fired. The mother's afraid of the, the maniac. He's liable to stab her in the chest so she can't do it. Or she's working two jobs. The father isn't there because there is no father there anymore. You know how many single families there are in this country? This is the new America. Do you understand what I am talking about? Ronald Reagan is dead. William F. Buckley Jr. is cold as the earth. He's a skeleton under the ground. This is the world we live in. Pragmatists versus purists. My prediction... Trump will do both events tonight. If anyone can predict better than I can, they should be arrested. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Never forget where you heard it first. There seems to be a frenzy going on in the media. A frenzy between the purists and the pragmatists, and then, of course, the Democrat, socialist, Islamist media complex trying to destroy both branches of the Republican Party. And they're doing a very good job on it, of it. And then there's the Trumpomania story. And underneath or beneath the Trumpomania that is sweeping the world, or the nation in particular, is the news dancer. News dancers never had such a good time in her life. So you have the news dancer, you have Trumpomania. You have purists versus pragmatists. You have a frenzy going on in the media. Uh, there's a lot of topics that we're going to talk about. And here's something interesting. Just today, Thursday, two Republican candidates, both very loyal purists, super social conservatives, Rick Santorum and Mike Huckabee, agreed to attend Donald's alternative event, a fundraiser for veterans at Iowa's Drake University, during the news dancers' Uh, debate tonight on on on, on uh, Murdoch's news net network. Now Huckabee and Santorum are bigger men than the others. They have long been at odds with the more mainstream Republican establishment. They were low in the polls, but they've come to understand what needs to be done to win. This shows you that they're good men. Santorum and Huckabee are much better than uh, Cruz. And the ice cream man Rubio and whoever else is up there. I forgot already. Bush and Schmush. I don't remember them. Rand Paul is a real jerk, what he said today. Real sour grapes. I mean, really, he should go away already. He should go away. Just open a bowling alley in Des Moines. Call it uh, Paul's Lanes. Uh, he said such terrible things, Paul. Do we have Paul today? The bitter little Rand Paul with the... with the uh, play, play bitter little Rand Paul. Donald no. Trump, he's very much afraid of questions about his bankruptcies may be afraid about the fact that he's uh, actually never voted in a Republican presidential primary. So, you know, for 70 years, he's been a progressive Democrat. I was wondering if maybe he's going to show up in the Democrat primary debate the next time. Shame on you, Paul. Ah, you know better than what you just did. But you couldn't resist it because no one likes you. You're down in the polls. 
and no one you know you're unelectable to begin with and so you have to take a shot at the front runner that's very good doing the work for hillary will pay off in the end rand doing the work for the democrat socialist islamist machine will pay off in the end you will go right to the head of the class rand congratulations if you care to comment on anything that you've heard today and there's an awful lot to comment on i hope that you keep it short don't ask me how I am. I'm not feeling well. I have a headache and my dog is sick. I'll talk about the mascot of the Savage Nation in a minute. I'll do it now for 30 seconds. He came home last night. It was awful. To be honest with you, uh, I broke down a little bit because to see a very viable animal reduced to, you know, he was just limp and hardly moved. His eyes were dull from the medication. He had sutures in the lower part of his mouth. He couldn't eat. He couldn't drink. I try to put water on his lips with my finger. You know, this happens to people, too. I mean, you know, this happens to mothers and fathers and grandparents. But somehow when it happens to our innocent little dogs, we forget that they're mortal. I don't, I don't know how to put it. And uh, it was a roughie for me, a little roughie. But, you know, the show must go on. And, I, I mean, he's okay, really. He really is okay. He's getting better. I had to squirt the medicine in his mouth. He couldn't even take it because he was in such pain. And luckily, my assistant, Ryan, was smart enough to buy baby food, which is really amazing because I, I had not put a spoon into a baby food jar since many, many decades now. And the sound of the spoon in the baby uh, food jar came back to me <laughs> for when my children were babies. You know how you move the spoon around and it clinks back and forth? If you've ever fed a baby with a, a spoon of baby food, this was an organic baby food, no less. And it was amazing. He ate it. That's the only thing he would lick, which was very beautiful. But the sound of the of the spoon clinking inside the baby food jar, that's something only a parent who's had an infant who feeds the infant would understand what, you know, it's like remembrance as if things passed. It's like smelling uh, pieces of petite madeleine and having memories of the past. So animals are, you talk about purists? Tell me I don't know what a pure feeling is and tell me I don't know what a purist is. I've been a fanatical purist my whole life in almost every way. I'm an uncompromising man in almost every way. However, when it comes to saving America, can I say this? And it's not Donald I'm saying it. I do a deal with the devil to save this country. I heard a businessman say that to me once. I was moaning to him about or complaining really about somebody. This was way before radio, so don't, don't think I'm making a any allusions to anyone and this man said to me I would do a deal with the devil to make this happen that's the way it is that's the real world the world is filled with really evil people look at that thing in Iran that thing who covers himself with his head from head to toe like he's some pure force better than everyone on earth you know what he must be behind the scenes you know what a piece of work that man is the holier they are in the on the surface the dirtier they are behind closed doors I can guarantee you Nevertheless, here he goes to, I, to Italy, and the, the, the Italian cowards cover up ancient marble statues of men so they don't offend this double-talking phony from Iran, so they can get the, the, the deals from Iran and skim money off the top, these dirty, filthy politicians in Italy. And you know who wouldn't compromise with that fraud from Iran? The socialist leader of France, Hollande refused to take wine off the menu for that fraud. The fraud from Iran said, I will not go to dinner unless you take wine off the menu. Holan gave him the middle finger. Good for Holan. He's a better man than I ever thought he was. He is standing up to those Islamist murderers and those frauds, marching on the world stage like they're purer than everybody else, those murderers. Now let's take some calls on my main theme, which is not about dogs or baby food. It's about purists versus pragmatists and blood in the water. Trumpomania and the news dancer. The media frenzy. The knight in shining armor. Purists versus pragmatists. Purists have rarely elected anyone, ever, and they will not in 2016. And I told you that there is a adage, there's an adage in biology that I learned in high school which says adapt or die. There is no room for purists in any sphere of life today, except perhaps in a laboratory. I would say that there's room for purists in a science laboratory or in a technology laboratory. Pure math, there's a subject called pure mathematics. 
And uh, I understand that. Theoretical physicists run in a pure sphere. But these are concepts for textbooks and scientific papers. And there is a place for purist philosophy, as I say. We have to know where we come from politically. But you cannot win a general election in, in the new America. And notice what I just said to you. In the new America, based on a purist philosophy. And so I will take the man most likely to follow through on providing us with the greatest national security protection. That's Donald Trump. On defense, he was on this show two days ago. He said he would consider hiring a military veteran to run the Defense Department. You think you're going to get that from anyone else? I doubt it. He's on the record saying he'll build a wall with Mexico. Will he do it? I hope so. He's on the record saying he will throw the immigrants out from Syria and from Somalia who are being ushered into America by Obama the evil. And there's no other candidate that I think can even get the job done because he is a deal maker. And I said if a purist candidate or the purest candidate, if you think he's a purist, you're a crazy man, even if a purist candidate should win, it would be the end of Congress as you know it. He would not be able to get anything done because no one likes him in Congress and he cannot make deals. He never has made deals and he never, he never has made deals and he won't make deals, the purist, because he isn't a purist. And then we have the news dancer on Fox News whose haircut indicates to me that she's on the way to ABC where she belongs. And I would say to Megan this, Megan, you belong on Good Morning America. You are always made for Good Morning America. And we wish you well at Good Morning America. Now let's take some calls on the Savage Nation. The minute I return, well, I'll take one right now. I haven't had to take it any, really. Rosemary on WJR in Detroit, fire away 30 seconds or less. Hi. I just want to tell you that the only thing I have to say is everything you've said is absolutely right. You say what America has in our guts. My Jewish husband used to say, you know what? It's either niche for mir or niche for dear. And you're niche for mir. You're the goodness, and you are liked by Trump because you're just like him. You've got guts, and you're a mensch. Well, nothing is better than that coming from a strong woman like you, and I thank you for that. I wish I had a relative who felt the same way. <laughs> let, let's let that hang in, in the air. I miss them all. I really do. Sometimes, sometimes I see them all in my head. I remember all of the great, great times when my mother was alive. I don't, I don't talk to any of my relatives. The only relatives I talk to are the ones in my own direct family that I created. Would you believe it? That's the world I live in. It's like I left them in the old world. It's like my ancestors left Russia and came to New York. They didn't keep in touch with their ancestors from Russia. They didn't know who they were. I left New York. They're like in Russia to me. They're, they're in the old country. They're nice people. I love them all, but they, they think like they just got off the boat. They think like it's 1930, and it's the ILGWU versus the evil factory owner. So you can't talk to people like that. In other words, if you imagine Woody Allen and Larry David in a room in skirts, that would be my relatives. And really, I don't want to eat dinner with... Larry David in a skirt, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay, WMAL, one of my big, gigantic affiliates, thanks to Cumulus Radio. Otto, on line one, what's on your mind? Mike, I love you, but when you talk bad about America and the youth of America, you're just wrong. You look Wait, at sir, what, sir what, what are you talking about? When did you hear me talk bad about the youth of America? What, the white boys with pants hanging under there behind? That's your idea of the future? You like that? America is filled with greatness. There are, there's always going to be the 5%. And maybe when you and I were younger, it was 2%, and maybe now it's 10. There is still a great deal of greatness in this country. And at some point, when I hear you talking bad about America and American people, you sound like the Democrats. Ah, they're too stupid to vote somebody into this. I've said. Otto, 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 slow down. Otto, you're starting to sound like you're on meds that are failing you. Otto, listen to me. Where do you live, like in Washington or in that area? You don't see white boys walking around aping jailbirds? I do. That's you don't see them driving in cars playing crack uh, rap music? You don't listen to the boom boxes in cars with the stupid white boys aping uh, 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 jailbirds? You don't hear that? Mike, that's, that's the 5%. That's the 10%. Oh, you th oh, it's 5%? Where are the other 95% that I don't see? I don't know, Mike. Where are you hanging out? College. 
Uh, so this is an infomercial now for a college. Okay, you should have said that from the beginning. Thank you. You have an 800 number you can give out at the 